I woke up on Wednesday morning and I thought to myself, I wonder how many terrible gaming pre-builds I can buy before my wife divorces me. <laughs> So to put this to the test, I got into my car and drove to the local Best Buy to see what stock they had. And when I got there, one of the first systems I saw was a 2000 Canadian dollar Asus Strix gaming system. I looked at its specs and I thought, oh, that's pretty decent. Oh, what did they do to the inside of it? And feeling a nerd rant bubbling up inside, I, I just had to buy it and push my luck with my wife. But luckily, we have a video sponsor today, so that, that does help out a little bit. Today's video is sponsored by Govi, more specifically by their RGBIC light strips. This is an awesome way to turn your loser TV into a dope ass RGB TV. In the package, you get two 5 meter RGB strips. Look at all this RGB, and this is only one of the rolls. These Govi RGBIC strip lights display multiple colors simultaneously on one strip. And Govi has a really nice app that actually works, which is surprising for this kind of accessory. And it also works with Alexa. Alexa, turn TV off. Okay. So if you think these Govi RGBIC light strips look shy. awesome, Check them out in the link in the description below. Wow, this box is massive. And it reminds me a little bit of like a tacky version of the monolith in 2001 A Space Odyssey. Inside we have the Eye of Sauron. Uh, this just seems to be the accessories. We've got very high quality packing foam. It actually reminds me quite a bit of the uh, Alienware pre-built packing foam. It seems to be very well packaged, so I don't think that even the world's most disgruntled DHL employee will be able to destroy it. Oh, 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 wow, that almost ended really badly. What do you think of it? You comfy? Oh, there we go, at least we, oh, I hit the light fixture as I was about to brag about not dropping this system. <laughs> Apparently this is what a $1,500 Asus Republic of Gamers pre-built looks like from Best Buy. And on the surface, it's pretty promising. We've got some ventilation in the front that actually goes into the case. On the top, we've got more ventilation. It's also got a top handle, which not only means that nerd on a budget will love it, but you can also pump some fat iron in between gaming sessions. <laughs> <laughs> Here is a headphone hanger, I think, uh, which is a pretty good idea, although that's very flimsy. I wouldn't trust my headphones on there. As far as front IO goes, it's got some ports. It's also got the appropriate NVIDIA RTX and Ryzen 7 badging on the front, which is worth many EPIN points. On the back behind the motherboard tray, there's actually also some ventilation. It does look very gamery and it's not really gonna help much for airflow, I can't imagine, but you know, it's the thought that counts. It's got a pretty basic rear IO and what's most worrying about it is the fact that it's got a dinosaur video output, so yeah, that's, that's never an amazing sign. It's only once you get to the side panel that my nerd hemorrhoid starts throbbing. You've got this glass, I think it's glass side panel, and then behind all of that there's, well, none of that looks particularly promising. Now when just looking straight into the side of the system like that, you can already see a couple of pretty, pretty big oofs with this system. And again, it, it has a glass side panel on it. So if you're buying one of these, you can see these problems. Now the first one is the fact that it's only got one 16 gig stick of RAM. And this is kind of like throwing acid in an athlete's face before they have to do the 100 meter sprint. It's just such a stupid way to cripple your system. Uh, but let's see what speed this RAM is. In here we have a uh, DDR4 3200 megahertz. Now if it actually runs at that speed out of the box, we're gonna be losing about 20% of our gaming performance compared to two 8 gig sticks running in dual channel, just because Ryzen is a real memory bandwidth hog. 
Although, if it runs slower than that out of the box, we're gonna lose a lot of gaming performance. So Asus, I hope you overclock this bad boy. The second very big oof here, which is this terrible looking little cooler. What is that? This cooler is so tiny, and it's sitting on a Ryzen 7 3700X, which is an 8-core, 16-thread, hot boy CPU. Using this cooler for this processor is kind of like trying to put out a volcano with a super soaker. At least, I assume. I mean, maybe the airflow in the case will compensate for it a bit. I'm really interested to see what kind of temperatures we're gonna get with this little small PP cooler. As far as the graphics card goes, this system is an NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super in it, which is a great graphics card at this price point. I just wish they didn't have a blower cooler on it. But looking around inside here, this case has great airflow, even though it only has one exhaust fan. So yeah, I'm really curious to see what kind of temperatures we'll get. And then another issue that you can just kind of see through the side of the case is this motherboard has a pretty terrible looking power delivery. Now for those of you losers that don't know what that means, basically one of a motherboard's main jobs is to provide enough power to the processor so that it can do all of its calculations and math and stuff. But if the motherboard can't provide enough power to the processor, it's not going to be able to math as hard as it needs to. And looking at this motherboard, pairing it with a power-hungry CPU like the Ryzen 7 3700X may be a little bit like getting a Tour de France athlete to compete on a tricycle made of their own tiers. Or it's gonna be perfectly fine, we'll have to wait till the thermals and the testing later in the video. I actually can't see what power supply that is. I think all of the information is on the other side of the unit. I've unscrewed it, but the way that they've set this up means that I'm gonna have to pretty much entirely disassemble this system and unplug everything to get this unit out. So I'm gonna look on the internet and see what information I can find about it. The guy at Best Buy very excitedly told me that this gaming pre-built comes with a mouse and keyboard. So I'm hoping they're gonna be gaming grade because I'm gonna use them for this video. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh, this is just premium quality right there. Maybe the mouse will be better because it comes in this sweet Republic of Gamers box. Oh jeez, oh no. Just, this is like the worst mouse I've ever seen. It's the moment of truth! I'm so excited to switch this on and, and see what happens. Oh, here. Oh, oh, okay. So we've got some, some lighting effect happening. This keyboard and mouse are, are really interesting. I, I think the technical term for what these are is, is e-waste. Don't use, no, no, basic, no, no, no. Now the most important step to evaluating the desktop user experience of a pre-built is by having a look at all of the venereal disease installed on it. I mean bloatware that it has installed on it. And straight off the bat it's got Armory Crate on it which is like Asus's software. I am not a huge fan of Armory Crate. It behaves quite suspiciously like a virus from the 90s. So I, I, I don't love that that's on there, but it's got a bunch of Asus stuff in this Asus pre-built, so I guess you don't have much of a choice there. It's good to see McAfee make a return. Uh, I did a video on an Alienware pre-built a while ago, and it actually didn't come with McAfee installed on it out of the box, so I felt a little bit scammed. So it's nice to see that terrible bit of antivirus on here. Other than that, you've got the Microsoft Office stuff, which is fairly run of the mill. And then other than that, it's not that bad. It doesn't have much crap on it. The RAM is actually running at 3200 megahertz, which is good. That's straight out of the box. It's clocked to the speed that it should be running. It's still single channel though, two terabyte games drive, which is pretty good. And there's a 500 gig NVMe SSD installed. So this is a promising system but it just has these little issues with it that ruins it. Uh, potentially, we'll see what kind of gaming performance we get and what kind of temperatures and clock speeds we get with the CPU. The 
running performance is perfectly reasonable in a vacuum. All of the games at 1080p ran very well, except for Crisis, but that's because it was programmed by a room full of bonobos. Oh yeah, and Escape from Tarkov was running weirdly badly at these settings. I actually have very similar specifications to the system in my editing rig, and I was getting better frame rates at 1440p than I was at 1080p on this system, so that's pretty weird. Now to diagnose this, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch out that abomination of a single 16 gig stick for two 8 gig sticks to see how much of a difference that makes. Now I'm only gonna compare like a couple of games here because I've already done all of these tests with pretty much this exact system. So if you want more detail on that, check out the video linked in the description below. But as you can see here with Battlefield 5, you're getting about 20% more gaming performance exactly as I said. So yeah, I'm, I'm clearly a professional that knows what he's talking about. And then when it comes to Escape from Tarkov, the game ran way better, like way better. It felt significantly better and that memory bandwidth really kills that game's gaming performance. Now I want to briefly mention the temperatures again because they are under control on the system, although it does get very noisy. And the fact that the case actually has pretty good airflow is a bit of an issue here because there's nothing to obstruct all of the noise of that shouting little cooler, so it is very obnoxious on a desk next to you. Surprisingly, the power delivery seems to be handling that CPU very well. The temperatures weren't getting too hot, although when it comes to the core clock, it does run about 200 megahertz slower than the core frequency on my editing system with a motherboard that has a really good power delivery. Yeah, it's pretty surprising. It's, it's handling it better than I thought. So it seems like everything's reasonably dandy here. I mean, you lose about 20% of your gaming performance and it's very shouty, but at least it's not hot and the power delivery can handle the chip. But that's while gaming. What happens if you use a slightly more serious workload, something like Ida64 and Furmark? And with this admittedly fairly unreasonable workload, you can see that the system is really starting to sweat here. That cooler is shouting louder than ever. and the CPU just bounces off of 100 degrees Celsius every now and then. It's not thermally throttling yet, but it's very nearly there. The same goes for the motherboard's power delivery, which is sitting at 90 degrees Celsius. It's right on the edge of catching on fire here. And that, just being on the border of catching on fire but never quite hitting that point, is one of the things that irritates me so much about this system, and it brings me to the rant conclusion of this video. Dove, it's rant time! And with that, it brings me to my conclusion, and it's rant time. Because for the last year, I've been buying a bunch of these off-the-shelf pre-builds to see if any of them are decent. And this Asus one is very close to being one of the best options on the market. Market. All they needed to do was put a better motherboard in it with four RAM slots so that they could have two 8 gig sticks in there with decent performance and still offer future upgradability. If the VRM had proper cooling on it, it would have been able to more than just barely handle the CPU. And if they put a proper CPU cooler on there, it would be able to run games without shouting like a banshee with its testicles caught in a door. And that is just the pre-built sob story. All of the pre-builds I look at have some major unnecessary compromise. And at $1,500, you shouldn't be making that compromise. And the reason that these companies cut these corners is because they know that the average consumer who buys a pre-built at Best Buy doesn't know that this stuff's important. They know that more RAM is better and that they may need a bigger hard drive and that an i7 is better than an i5 for some reason, but they don't know that they need decent cooling on their VRMs or dual channel memory. I was actually standing waiting at the Best Buy while I bought this system, watching a bunch of people buying computers there. And it's actually really sad because there are a bunch of noobs that don't know anything about computers. They just know what they want to do with it and nothing more. And then a company like Asus and HP and Alienware and all of those companies take advantage of these people. You're not supposed to be taking advantage of your customers. You're supposed to be helping them out. Asus, you you're better than that. You know what you're doing. Like, don't, don't do stuff like this to your consumer because you're taking advantage of them and that's naughty. Very, very naughty. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, with that, if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one, and check out all of my social media linked in the description below. And until the next video, bye-bye.